Dupont Cavalcade of America, starring Melvin Douglas. Good evening. This is Melvin Douglas. Tonight, Cavalcade tells the story of a man of warm humanity whose life story needs no fine adjectives or brilliant phrases in the telling. I'm delighted to have the chance to portray him tonight. His name is Dr. Chester, Arthur Chester Sudan. But before we begin, here's Bill Hamilton of the DuPont Company. Good evening. If your car had not been polished for some time and you looked at the finish under a microscope, you would probably find it looking rough as baked mud. That's because the sun, wind, and rain cause a gradual chalking of the finish and loosen the tiny pigment particles which roughen the surface and dull the luster. DuPont No. 7 polish removes scum and chalked pigment safely and produces a beautiful dry luster. Treat your car to a good cleaning with No. 7 polish, the only polish containing methyl cellulose, the quick and easy stroke saver. No. 7 polish is among DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. Now, Village Doctor, an original radio play starring Melvin Douglas as Dr. Archer Sudan on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. It's the summer of 1926. At the University of Chicago, a man leaves the campus. There's a smile on his face, one of expectancy, and a far away look in his eyes. This man is... Dan. Oh, Dan. Hey, Dr. Sedan. Hmm? What? Don't you know your nickname anymore? Oh, yeah, sure. I, I, I was dreaming, I guess. Well, that's obvious. What do you have on your mind? Fish, Charlie. Just fish. Fish? Fish. What kind of fish? Big ones, little ones, medium-sized ones, millions of fish. I don't get it. Charlie, I'm going on a vacation. You? Vacation? Vacation. Well, that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. I've taken leave of absence from research and teaching. I'm going to Colorado. I'm going to fish every stream, every lake in the state. Ten to one, you're back before the summer's over. Well, if I am, it'll be because the fish are all gone. Oh, Charlie, I've been dreaming about this for a long time. I've grown fins just thinking about it. And I'm going to buy every kind of rod and reel I can find. I'll probably catch fish no one's ever seen before. Do you like fish? Not that much. Uh, you don't know what you're missing. I tell you, you get up early in the morning... There's no one around you. But fish. That's it. <laughs> I can see them now. Big rainbow trout curving up out of the water. Flashing in the sun. Hey, yes, sir, doctor. You'll find them big, way over there. To the best spot in Colorado. Let's see if I've got the direction straight. First, you... Uh, take the road straight out of Kremlin. Uh, that's where you are now. Uh-huh. And then... Oh, say, you got some mighty nice equipment there, Doc. <laughs> you like it? <laughs> you bet. I sure wish I could get around more, but this drugstore kind of keeps me busy and... Oh, excuse me, Doc. Uh, morning, Mrs. Kasulis. I heard there's a doctor in town. Why, yes, there is. This is the doctor. Oh. Was anything wrong? My four kids are so sick, Doctor. Their throats are so sore they can't swallow. Mm -hmm. And their heads are hot and... Has I'm... the doctor seen them? Oh, there's no doctor here. No doctor? Will you come up and take a look at my children, please? Uh, well, uh, Doc's on a vacation, Mrs. Kasulis, and well, That's I... all right. Uh, how far is your place, Mrs. Kasulis? Oh, it's pretty far from here, and the roads are terrible, but... Oh, doctor, they're awful sick kids. Oh, that's all right now. We'll have them fixed up in a jiffy. Oh, thank you. i got to get something at the store. I'll be waiting right outside. Makes it tough, you know, Doc. A lot's tougher in winter when the snow comes. You mean to say there's no doctor here at all? Nope. Us folks in Kremlin have to do the best we can. Hmm. Yes, babies, pneumonia, measles, everything. Well, I better get going. It may not be just a sore throat, you know. Uh, yes, I know. Oh, you'll be kind of out of the way of the fishing spot I was telling you about. The fact is, you'll have to come back here after you get through with the kids and start all over again. <laughs> well, that's okay. Fish know how to wait.
I sure am grateful to you, Dr. Sedan. I don't know what we'd have done. Well, that's all right, Miss Casola. You just keep an eye on those throats. If there's any more soreness, use that medicine I left. Mm-hmm. Good morning, Dr. Sudan. Well, hiya. How's the throat? Lots better. Sure, sure. Your sister's all right this morning? Sure, they're all right. You betcha. You were pretty sick kids the day I came up here. You packing? You gonna leave? Yep. Going fishing. Ain't no big ones around. You gotta go way over there. Mm-hmm, I know. But fixing up that throat of yours was more important. Here, let me take a look at it. Come on, open up. You ain't gonna put no more of that stuff in it, are you? <laughs> nah, not this morning. Come on, open up. Ah. Uh... Mm-hmm. All clear. It's better, huh? You betcha. I sure wish we had a doctor near here. Makes a person feel lots better just knowing it, even if nobody's sick. Mm-hmm. Well, <clears throat> I'm all packed. You going fishing, huh? You betcha. Don't forget, the big ones are way over there. Yes, sir, I'll remember that. Well, goodbye, Mr. Zulis. And don't forget to use that medicine. Oh, hey, oh, it's oh, Mr. Burke. Oh, oh, oh. Hiya, Mr. Burke. Oh, good morning, son. Mrs. Casula. Morning, Mr. Burke. Kids all better, huh? Fine and dandy. Uh, you're the doc, huh? Mm-hmm, my name's Sedan. Yeah, I heard about you staying here to fix up the kids. Yeah, it was darn nice of you. I thought maybe while you was around these parts, you wouldn't mind coming over to my place. Take uh, a look at my wife. Well, I... Well, I think maybe it's just a summer cold, but the kind of cough that I don't like the sound of. I'd be glad to run over and do what I can, Mr. Burke. Yeah, I guess you would, Mrs. Casulis. Thank you, but it kind of make me feel better to know that a real doctor had a look. Uh, where is your place, Mr. Burke? Uh, it's west. Uh-huh. It's not, uh, way over there. Oh, no, sir. Why? Well, I was just wondering... I don't like to break up your fishing, Dr. Sedan, but, gee, I'm awful worried. Yeah, well, well, this beautiful country, I don't mind taking a look at it. Let's go, Mr. Burke. One by one, the families who lived in the district heard about the kindly doctor who didn't mind giving up a bit of fishing to help them. One by one, they came to him. Dr. Sedan, while you're up here, would you mind running over to my place? One of the kids is ailing. Sure, all right. Doctor, I know you're on a vacation, but this won't take you very long. My little boy's got a bad foot, and I thought Why, maybe... of course, I'd be glad to, right away. I'm awfully glad you made it up here, Doctor. I heard you were leaving soon. Mm-hmm, vacation's about over. Well, you just keep that boy warm. He'll be all right in no time. Dr. Sedan, glad to see you again. Uh, are you finally going to get in some real fishing? <laughs> nope, vacation's over. I got to get back to Chicago. Oh, well, that's too bad. Yeah, we're going to miss you around here. Well, Dr. Sedan, <laughs> it's good to have you back at the university. I'll bet there isn't a rainbow trout left in Colorado. <laughs> oh, there are a few, I'm afraid, Dr. Wingrown. Well, a vacation's a fine thing for a man. Sets him up with a new point of view for the new semester's work. Now, uh, <clears throat> I've been thinking. If you want to rearrange your research laboratory, I think I know where we can get the fun. Well, that's very tempting, Doctor, but I won't be needing any changes in the laboratory. No, but last spring you said that you were so crowded. Well, I might as well tell you, I've come back to the university to... Offer my resignation. Resignation? I don't believe it. Oh, six months ago, I wouldn't have believed it either. Oh, I see. A better position at some other university. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going back to Colorado. I'm going to practice there. What? But you're one of our best teachers, our best research man. Why on earth do you want to practice? Because where I'm going, teaching and research mean practice. Well, I'm afraid I don't understand. Ever been in Colorado Mountains, sir? Yes, I've traveled through there once on my way to the Grand Canyon. Oh, beautiful country, but... Yeah, uh... beautiful. And lonely. The people are spread out miles apart. And when they're sick, there's no doctor. They don't know how to take care of themselves. Many of them don't even know the first primary rules of first aid. I want to do research in terms of people. Teaching in terms of better health. 
Better communities, better lives. But you're fitted for big things, Dr. Sudan. Well, this is a big thing. It's the only thing I can do as a doctor after seeing what those people out there need. I figure it this way. When a person is sick, anything you can do to add to his comfort is good medicine. Even if it's nothing more than words or straightening out a rumpled bed or washing his face. Well, we're sorry to lose you. But in a way, I guess I'm glad we're losing you this way. Goodbye and good luck. Thank you, sir. I suppose Mrs. Sudan will join you later. Hmm? Oh, no, no. She's going with me. Well, that just about does it, Doc. I guess all your stuff's moved in. Yeah, I think so, Ed. My wife's in there unpacking already. Thanks a lot. Ah, it wasn't anything. Well, I better be getting back now. I've got to make some more deliveries before night. All right. See you later. Yep. Get out. Be back tomorrow, Doc. All right, Ed. So long. And thanks. What's the matter, Dan? Hmm? Oh, oh too late. Oh, nothing. Sorry? Sorry? Me? No. That uh, wagon was our last link, wasn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. Well, let's see what we can do with the cabin. There isn't much room. You won't have an office. Well, it doesn't matter about me. Are you worrying about me? In a way, I guess. It doesn't seem right, setting you down in one room, no electricity, no running water. Look at it. I think it's cute. Besides, it's got a beautiful view. Yeah, now. But in winter, they say the snowflakes out here are as big as geese. And don't forget the fish. Yeah, that's right. Tulane, hmm? come over here at the window. What is it? You see that range of mountains way over there? Yeah. Well, there's a stream up there where the trout are so big that when they're running, they raise the water level three feet. Oh, Dan. <laughs> Maybe a little smaller, huh? No, no smaller. <laughs> Someday I'm going up there and... Say, it's still early. My fishing stuff is right where I can get at it. Why don't we... Oh, no. Too much to do, I guess. Unpack, get settled. If we leave now, we could get in a few hours fishing. Sure. Sure, I bet we could. There's not much to unpack. It wouldn't take as long to do it tonight. I want to see those trout so big that they... Dan. Huh? Uh, uh morning, folks. Morning. Oh, good morning. Uh, we didn't hear you walk up. Uh, heard you talking and the door was open, so I... Uh... Why, of course. Come on in. I'm Dr. Sedan. Uh, this is my wife, Jolene. How do you do? Howdy. My name's Gardner. My ranch is just over that away. Oh, we're neighbors then. Well, maybe about 15 miles, but uh, we're neighbors. Sure, sure. Nice of you to drop over. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, Doc, I I kind of hated to bother you knowing you just got here and wanted to get settled and all, but... Uh, Was there something wrong? Well, I I don't know. You see, my wife's... Well, it, it's it's about time, and I... Yeah. Oh, I see. Uh, <clears throat> Jolene, would you mind getting out my case... It's, uh, it's right on top of the fishing stuff. You are listening to Village Doctor, starring Melvin Douglas as Dr. Archer Sudan on The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. During a vacation trip in the Colorado mountains, Dr. Archer Sudan was deeply moved by the plight of the isolated mountain folk who had no doctor to tend their ills. So he gave up his promising career at the University of Chicago to become their village doctor. So now, on a wintry night several years later. Well, we can't get up to the house, Doc. We've got to go on foot from here. All right. You're going to make it, Doc? Sure, don't worry, Collins. Come on. Yeah. Hated to get you out on a night like this. The snow's so deep. Looks like the temperature's going to hit bottom, too. Yeah, it's no worse than any other winter. Yeah. Well, Mrs. Peter's taking care of my wife. I kind of worry about her. Been so many deaths lately. Babies and mothers. Mrs. Peter's? 
Oh, she's the old woman who does the cleaning. Yeah, huh? yeah. She's been midwife up here for years, too. She's a queer, superstitious old lady, but... <laughs> Well, she does the best she can, well, I guess. your wife needs a doctor at a time like this. Oh, here we are, Doc. Uh, steps, steps are right there. Oh, you got back, huh? Well, it ain't going to be long Mary's now. Mary's all right, ain't she, oh, Mrs. Peters? Oh, of course. Now, don't you worry none. I'll take care of her. Oh, this here's Doc Sudan, Mrs. Peters. Could have saved yourself a trip, Doc. Everything's all right. Why, of course, but we'll just make sure. I've done this a hundred times. Well, uh, <clears throat> that's all right, Mrs. Peters, but you'd better change your clothes. My clothes? What for? Well, they're a little soiled for this kind of work. Well, sure they are, but I've been cleaning up the place. Anyhow, I've done this a thousand times. I guess I know what to do. Mrs. Peters, I know you've helped in a lot of cases like this, but uh, I'd rather you change your clothes. What for? Because, Mrs. Peters, I don't like to take chances of infection. Chances? Everybody takes a chance at a time like this. Now, you're younger than I am. Yes, Gosh, Mrs. But... Peters, yes. But I'm afraid you'll have to do as I say or you can't help. Now, I'm sure we both want this to be a fine, healthy baby, don't we? Well, these newfangled notions. What's the world coming to? It's coming to something better, I hope. So let's help it along, shall we? Dan. Dan. Hmm? Oh, I, I'm sorry, Tulane. What'd you say? <laughs> Nothing yet. I was just wondering what you were thinking about. Look, darling. You know, just being a doctor isn't enough. Well, I don't understand, dear. Well, the other night over at Collins' place, if I hadn't arrived when I did, Mrs. Peters would have taken my place. Oh, dear. Yeah. You know, I want to tell these people how to take care of themselves. Prevent sickness before it gets started. That's an awfully big job. Well, so is being a doctor. You see, I figure it's part of my job to teach people, not only to cure them. Well, you've got a lot to do in just that alone. I know, but suppose I do take on that extra job. Think of what it would mean to everyone, whether sanitation, home nursing... You'd have to do a lot of talking and a lot of teaching. Sure, I know, but they're willing to listen. That's half the battle already. Look... You remember when that rancher was accidentally shot? Yes. Well, if anyone near him had known the first thing about first aid, maybe we wouldn't have had to amputate his leg. There are a dozen cases I can think of where a little knowledge of nursing would have saved hours of pain and suffering. And who's going to teach all this? I am. Oh, darling, how are you going to find the time? Oh, I'll squeeze it in somehow. I can start in the spring when the roads are cleared. In the spring? But then there won't be any time for your vacation. Well, that doesn't matter. <laughs> Now, besides, maybe we can get in a little fishing on the side, huh? Maybe. Now, look, here's the right way to tend to a wound like that. Be sure that everything's clean. First, do all you can to stop the bleeding. This is a tourniquet, and it's applied like this. Now, don't forget, you're to come to see me every week until the baby's born, understand? And follow the diet I gave you. All right, Doc. And remember everything I've told you. You'll be all right. Day after day, the doctor's fight for better conditions went on. Then he concerned himself with another important matter. Oh, just a moment, Doctor. Isn't the matter of road construction a little out of, out of your province? No, it isn't, Commissioner. I can think of a dozen cases where good roads would have meant the difference between life and death. Gentlemen, please, we've got to have good roads. And we've got to have equipment to keep them open during the winter months. And so Dr. Sudan fought for and got what he wanted. Through the long, bitter, cold winters, the doc's car plowed through the snow till it could go no farther, and the doc got out and walked. In the summer, he supervised work on the 19-room hospital he helped build for the people of his community. Through the years, he became not only the man to whom people came with their illness, but... Dr. Sedan, I can't think of nobody else who could tell me what I want to know. Should Jesse get married now or finish school first? Doc, your advice is always good, so I want some more. Uh, what do you think about me buying that other 40 acres on the south side of my place? Dr. Sudan, Pa said you'd be able to tell me if my dog's going to get over that fight with that skunk. Year 
after year, the doc went on working, always patient, always kindly, always resourceful. But most important, always a friend to the people whom he had served and who had come to love him. Well, then, after 21 years of continual faithful service... Oh, it just don't seem true, Doc. You're leaving here. <laughs> it doesn't seem right to me either, Collins. I feel as though I should just be arriving. We're going to miss you, Doc. Oh, well, I'll be back to see you. Don't worry. Well, if anything gets wrong with us, we'll come down to Denver to see you. No, you won't. No, yeah, but... No. no, you won't. Huh? Because I've left a good young man here in my place. Dr. Seriana, you listen to him. Do what he says. He'll carry on where I left off. My, it don't seem like 21 years have gone by. Yeah, it does when I look at that son of mine. He's grown like one of those Colorado pines. Well, come back and see us, Doc. Come back often. No, oh, I will. You betcha. And when I do, we'll land the biggest trout in the world. And so Dr. Sudan went to Denver. He would have liked to stay in the mountains, but those years of hiking through the snow, the cold and the rain... The nights when he'd been forced to stay out because he couldn't get back home had taken their toll. So Doc Sedan had to prescribe for himself. Besides, his son wanted to follow in his father's footsteps, and there was a fine medical school at the University of Colorado. But the story isn't over. On January 7th, 1948, in Cleveland, Ohio. And so the American Medical Association makes this first annual award for outstanding community service by a general practitioner. We're pleased to present this gold medal to Dr. Archer Chester Sedan. Thank you. Thank you. The goodwill that doctors enjoy today is the heritage of past generations of general practitioners. Therefore, I accept this award as your recognition of thousands of general practitioners. It's a great honor indeed to have been selected from among hundreds of equally meritorious candidates to receive this. The first such award. Words cannot express my gratitude. General practitioners today, as in the past, are doing their utmost to maintain and to enhance... looking at some lines, some trout flies. What's that shiny thing in your creel? Uh, nothing. It is, too. Let's see. Why, Dan, it's the gold medal they awarded you. Is that where you keep it? Mm, well, I can't think of a better place. <laughs> Among my favorite treasures. Well, then I think we should take it along with us on our trip. It might help you to land an extra big one when we get... Way over there. Yeah, it could be. When are we going? As soon as Chester gets here. Oh, well, then we'd better get this equipment packed up. He should be home any minute now. You know, that kid's beginning to show signs of being a master trout fisherman, just like his old man. <laughs> I hope he has more time than his old man. Yeah. Uh, come in. Hey, Doc, you ain't busy now, are you? Well, uh... Oh, Doc, please, my wife is awful sick. Can you come right away? Well, I was just going well, to... Take her just south away. South? Not, uh, way over there? Uh, no, it ain't. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, all right. Uh, <clears throat> Chalene, dear, tell Chester to take my equipment and go on ahead. If he wants to know where the big ones are jumping, just tell him it's, uh, way over there. <laughs> joins the audience in the theater tonight, applauding the performance of Melvin Douglas and the rest of tonight's cast from the Cavalcade of America. <laughs> Melvin Douglas will return in just a moment, but first, 
Here's Bill Hamilton of the DuPont Company. What color is your house? What color do you think is most attractive on a New England farmhouse? A California bungalow. At the DuPont Company, we need to know the answers to these questions because DuPont manufactures paints and finishes of many kinds. Under the American system of free enterprise, a manufacturer stays in business only so long as he supplies you with what you want. So, we ask 20,000 people from many parts of the United States what color they like best in outside house paint. More than half of them, 53% to be exact, voted for white. DuPont number 40 outside white house paint starts white and stays white. Now, there's a reason, a chemical reason. DuPont number 40 is made with titanium dioxide, the whitest pigment known to science. Another reason it is liked so much by professional painters and homeowners is what we call controlled chalking. DuPont number 40 outside white is so formulated that as time goes on, a microscopically fine white powder forms on its surface. Heavy rains wash away this powder and take the dust and dirt along. In other words, DuPont number 40 actually washes its own face. That's why it stays white so long. Of course, it doesn't work out in exactly this way on every house. If there is a lot of smoke in your neighborhood, or if your house is sheltered by too many trees, the self-cleaning action is slower. This ability of DuPont number 40 outside white house paint to wash its own face is a hidden value, a plus value to keep in mind when you buy house paint. If you're having your house painted this spring, ask your painter to tell you about it. DuPont self-cleaning house paint may now be had in popular light tints as well as white, colors that are as attractive as they are long-lasting and that are popular additions to the DuPont Company's Better Things for Better Living Through Chemistry. Now, once again, here's tonight's star, Melvin Douglas. Next Sunday, millions will celebrate I Am an American Day. Why don't we all prove that we believe that America's security is our security by saving through U.S. security bonds? There's an easy, automatic way to do this, either through the payroll savings plan where you work or the bond-a-month plan where you bank. Let's look into it and make every payday I Am an American Day. <laughs> Next week, Cavalcade presents the brilliant Hollywood star, Irene Dunn, in Queen of Heartbreak Trail, the thrilling story of Harriet Pullen, a woman who dared to venture into Skagway, Alaska, during the colorful days of the gold rush in the 90s. We invite you to listen next week to Queen of Heartbreak Trail on the DuPont Cavalcade of America, starring Irene Dunn. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade, Village Doctor, was written by Russell Hughes. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Bryan. Melvin Douglas can now be seen in Mr. Blanding's Builds His Dream House, an RKO picture released by Selznick. This is Ted Pearson inviting you to listen next week to Queen of Heartbreak Trail, starring Irene Dunn. Cavalcade of America is presented each week from the stage of the Long Acre Theater on Broadway in New York, and is brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.